Call the meeting to order. And the first item of business uh, will be this public hearing. Uh, this is on a presumed water rate increase for the coming season. Uh, what was in the paper was up to 5% potentially. So I think we probably should start with Pam, uh, who may make a presentation for us, or, or Scott, uh, how, Stephen, how are, you, how are you planning to do this? Which one of you is going to present the, the, the background? I am. Okay, go to it. All right. I can get my share screen to work. There we go. And actually, we had uh, put this presentation on our website about two weeks ago. It's got a lot of information in it, so I won't uh, go through everything on here. So in the interest of time, I'll try and hit the high points. Uh, of course, we serve of almost 50,000 people in our Tri-Town area. 3.2 million gallons of water a day runs through our system. But our number one mission is to protect the public health. Uh, a lot of people don't stop to think about that sometimes, but that is why we're here. Everything we do is to make sure that this system is maintained and with high quality water at every moment, at every point of the system. And that means providing a high quality water supply that's reliable and uh, dependable and infrastructure that will provide adequate flows and pressures throughout the system at all times. So our major issue coming up in our near future is the water supply. We've been working on this for a number of years uh, we had actually been designing a new uh, pipe to go to the Pawtucket Water Supply Board because we need a backup supply, which is uh, necessary for reliability and also required by law. So uh, there is a risk being fully dependent on the Providence Situate Reservoir System. They may experience flow reductions where they can cut water flow to uh, wholesale customers. And we have our East Bay Pipeline, which we did experience a leak on last year. That leak uh, was pretty severe, 400,000 gallons per day. And uh, fortunately, we were able to get some water from East Providence as a backup when we had to shut the main down, but we couldn't do it in the summertime because there was not enough water. So we had to let the leak run and operate the system until fall when our demand decreased. But that repair cost us $4 million, which we were not prepared for. That was not uh, funds that uh, we had allocated. So we uh, actually ended up taking out about $3.2 million in bonds, which we are now going to start paying debt service for. But the overall remedy, of course, is to um, have a second supply. And Pawtucket has an excellent high quality supply Although it's going to cost us uh, quite a bit of money to get there. Uh, we're going to construct this pipe in two phases. We actually had planned the first phase to go to the Providence, East Providence water system. And that will give us plenty of water. But that's going to be at a cost of $8 million. The problem is they also are supplied from Providence Water Supply Board. So it does not give us a secondary supply. This is the pipeline that we're going to be connecting. We're going to connect into the East Providence pipes that go across the bay with our pipe that comes across the bay. And that will give us a redundant supply from Providence. Then from there, we need to construct five miles of pipe from East Providence to Pawtucket, looking at a $40 million project. We are hoping that East Providence will join us in that project and cut the cost in half. But we did account for going either direction with two 10-year financial plans that both account for with East Providence and without East Providence. And our plans include both phase one, which we're doing this year, and phase two, which will start 
uh, design, which is being designed now and construction to begin, oh, 23 to 24. And also on our side, our main pump station is Nayat Road, which pumps our water from Providence. And we've got some work to do there. Uh, for climate change, we need to build a wall around the station and raise the transformer. So that's also included in the 10 year budget. And then on the side of the distribution system, we have a system that's over a hundred years old. Uh, it's got cast iron pipes, it's got concrete pipes, and it's got uh, ductile iron pipes. And they all deteriorate in different ways and need uh, to be um, treated somewhat differently. And what we're looking at is um, replacing those pipes or cleaning and lining them, lining asbestos pipes, which become more brittle with age and uh, continuing that for probably indefinitely. We have 233 miles of main with uh, quite a bit of it, which will need maintenance over the longer term. We're also looking at extending, extending our higher pressure zone into those areas that don't have um, a high enough pressure and we're working on a new pump station that's going to be constructed this year. We're going to be installing a new water main on Medicom Avenue, which is actually fairly expensive because it's in a state road with lots of utilities. And we'll be doing four miles of new main for interconnections for the expansion of that zone over the next four years or so. And just as an example, um, one foot of main costs about $300 to replace. So as you can imagine, $300 does not get us very far down the road. So we're looking at uh, long-term plans and doing things in the most cost-effective way possible. In the future, we, we're gonna be looking at replacing the Barrington tank. The one thing I'll mention a little while is our meter data, uh, data collection system, which will help all of our uh, customers. But this is kind of what our debt service is going to look like because we're going to be doing so much construction work that that does mean we have to pay for it. And we pay, we've set up a system where we have slow increments in our debt service costs. Again, trying to manage our uh, expenses as much as possible. As we've paid off some bonds over the last few years, we've been putting that money into a reserve account that will actually get uh, applied to uh, construction costs in the future so we can keep the rate increases down to a minimum. Uh, one thing we're working on now is the dams and I know there are some people concerned with that. There's actually nothing wrong with either dam. Um, we did get a notice of violation on the upper dam because of um, vegetation growth on the dam but that was the only reason. The dams have been uh, maintained and are in relatively good condition. The problem is they're old and they, um, they will not meet the new regulations. If those dams needed to be uh, meet the new regulations, it would be quite expensive for something we really don't need anymore. But that's not the only reason. The water quality of the reservoir is poor and degrading. It's high in nutrients and now it's switching over to a um, saltwater system. And that is uh, really affecting the wildlife. There's no flow through the system, so the general water quality is poor. There's um, high nutrients and low oxygen contents through the summer, uh, which affect uh, fish. The fish are disappearing in the reservoir. It's, uh, uh, it is going to be, uh, it's becoming a big problem and it's only going to get worse. And we felt as stewards of that reservoir for so many years, we need to find a way to make sure that that doesn't happen. And the only way to do that is to remove the dams and allow flow through that reservoir. Just as uh, work we've done in the last year, we've spent uh, over $2 million just on some main renovations. Plus we've also been working on uh, some service upgrades throughout the system. And for our major projects for this coming year is um, 
It's included in our capital budget. Again, the debt service for the repair to the East Bay pipeline, the construction of the phase one of the Pawtucket pipeline that goes to East Providence. That will give us enough water should something happen from our side that we can supply our entire system at any time of the year. Uh, we're working on the design for the phase two going to Pawtucket. And I know $40 million is a lot of money, but if we had to have replaced our treatment plant, which we would have had to do by this time, um, that would have cost us about 50 to 60 million at this point. And that's just the treatment plant. And it's got a very poor supply. As I mentioned, the water quality is considered not good for potable water by the state. And the supplies to the reservoir are also deteriorating. So it's, uh, and not adequate for water supply. Uh, there's very minimal amount of water available to invest the kind of money we would have to maintain that system. So the construction of the new pump station um, for the expansion of the higher pressure zone is uh, also included in our debt service for this year. And continuing pipeline improvements, we're looking at spending another two, two to two and a half million dollars. And about 600,000, we need to work on uh, some issues on our administration building. Again, it's an old school and it does need some maintenance. And in our operations maintenance budget, uh, we have a 3.4% increase. A good part of that increase is Providence Water raised their rates 19% this past year and they will be raising them 7%, which has already been pre-approved for next year. So we actually, we do have to uh, account for those funds. We're also continuing intervention in the rate case to hopefully get those rates down. We have been working on remediation of soils at our Hope Street tank, and uh, which are also, uh, oh, these are all items that are over and above what our general budget would normally include. And we have matching grants for the engineering design and permitting for the dam removals. And uh, one thing we are working on this year, it's been a big project over the last few years, is installing new meters with data collectors. And this will allow customers to actually look up their usage on a daily basis. And it will be uh, pretty helpful on discovering leaks in their system. Uh, we have customers that, you know, toilets leak. And unfortunately, when they do, they use an awful lot of water. This will help catch that um, fairly quickly. So again, we're continuing with our meter replacement program and our data collectors. Our proposed budget for 20, fiscal year 22, which is, the, is this year. Um, our biggest portion of that budget is for construction. 43% of the entire budget is construction. And then 23% um, is for everything else in O&M besides employee expense, which is seven, less than 20%, 17%, and the purchase, which equals, by the way, the purchase of Providence water. And just we've been putting a number of efficiencies in place. I'm not going to read through the whole list, but we've been doing a lot of work in-house. Uh, we brought uh, we're doing all our own vehicle maintenance. We brought in um, our uh, backhoe and dump trucks so we don't have to hire uh, contractors to do that work for us. So we are uh, very much concerned with the amount of money we spend and how we can save and everything that we do. Uh, overall, just want to show where there's still a decrease in water usage over the last um, 20 years. Um, mostly uh, fairly recently, mainly because of low flow fixtures. Uh, there is some conservation issues, but low flow fixtures are continuing to be replaced in homes and it does affect the amount of uh, water that people use. And unfortunately, we have a lot of fixed costs. So when you use less water, it does mean that it's going to cost me more. Um, so the rate increase, which is proposed up to 5%, uh, it's based on our strategic plan, which lists all these uh, projects that we have that we are planned for, that we need to do to maintain and keep the system 
in good operable condition because the last thing we want to do is have a deteriorating water system that uh, ends up uh, with um, issues that uh, would not protect the public health. And again, that's, that's our whole point in being here is we want to make sure every day people have water that they can trust is safe and uh, is available for whatever resource is needed. And that'll do it for me. Thank you, Pam. Uh, are there any people from the public who have questions or any board members who have questions? I don't. There's somebody in the chat with a question. Okay. How do we bring them on? He's unmuted. BB. Yes. Good, good morning. Uh, I should say good evening. Uh, my Hello. name is Robert, Robert Vitello. Yes, sir. I just want to start my video so you guys are not talking to a, uh, a black square. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Uh, good evening. My name is Robert Botello. Um, I represent the Kikimuit Community Association. Uh, the association is uh, approximately 250 re 240 residents uh, within uh, <coughs> excuse, 97 residential dwelling units along the uh, Kikimuit Reservoir in Warren, Rhode Island. Um, we, are, we are probably the most adamantly opposed to the dam, and I'm, I'm not going to uh, try to steal uh, the the ear and thunder, but I did want to specifically make some comments on the actual water rates. Uh, <clears throat> it's important to note that I, we are not obstructionists, nor um, are we seeking the total demise of the Bristol County Ward Authority. Ultimately, what we are trying to convey is that we would like to be good critical partners uh, in these unprecedented times. The community in general in the entire world, but the nation is experiencing the most extreme unemployment records that we have ever experienced. I believe that the new unique position of the Bristol County Water Authority, where they are self-governed due to the internal board and not necessarily regulated due to the Public Utilities Commission or any municipal authority, uh, relieves a significant amount of civil responsibility and due course action to not only oversee what the proposals are for the Bristol County Water Authority, but also the community unto itself. So yes, much of what we have talked about during the pandemic has been about public health, but just as importantly is it's also about economic health. And we are not in a position for a 10% raise last year a 5% raise this year and an additional 3% raise for the next 10 years, representing a 50% increase to support the current actions and activities of the Bristol County Water Authority. Granted, there are many significant work proposals that do need to be conducted by the, by the water company. However, there are also some non-critical proposals in as which every corporation throughout the entire country at this time is reevaluating its budget and is not op operating as in a business as usual environment. We are all struggling, but from the rate and sequencing that I am see from the proposed project of the Bristol County Water Authority, there's been no deviation in their business as usual schedule. In fact, it's quite the opposite. So one of the things I did want to mention is there there is an amendment to the proposal that Pam Marchand said that there's um, the about, about the dams. She was correct in several items, but not truly forthtelling about the, the, the remediation of the issue with the dams. The dams are occluded or stuck in the open position. The, the sluice gates are not permitting the proper water flow to cycle the environment. Essentially, it's suffocating that body of water because of lack of oxygen. Her, her proposal, the only way to fix a problem is to get rid of the dams, is not accurate. 
indeed, that's the most fiscal irresponsible proposal. Granted, I do believe that the North Dam and other, and other experts besides me have acknowledged that the potential North Dam could be a candidate for a permanent breach. But to let go and disband the South Dam is completely irresponsible. And all that needs to happen is to maintain those gates to allow proper water flow, to cycle the oxygen through. There are over eight significant risk factors associated with the dam removal. And because of these rate hikes directly contribute to the removal of those, of those dams, it is increasing the public awareness of a very unpopular Bristol County Water Authority and is only projected to get much worse. And as a result of this attention, there has been significant engagement with political advocates and state legislators to look into not only the autonomy and structure of the Bristol County Water Authority as it is regulated thereof, but also the appearance of conflict of interest or an appearance of thereof. So I kindly, I don't want to take any more of your time, but I do want to indicate that I did submit a formal uh, statement to several members on the board, in addition to Mrs. Pam Marchand, of this formal opposition. And this is, what you guys are hearing is only a one-way street, and there are two sides to every story, and there is a much more fiscally responsible approach to what is being proposed here. And a dam removal is definitely not a critical priority. And to sharpen the pencils, I would look into reducing this budget as much as possible. Thank you very much. And if I'm prepared to take any questions that anyone may have. I have one for you. What is the, uh, please describe what this conflict of interest is. Oh, so, about. No, so it appears because there's a, uh, the lack of PUC or uh, Public Utilities Commission oversight of the Bristol County Ward Authority's uh, activities. And when have engaged with the town councils, they are indicating that they do not regulate any of the uh, Bristol County Ward Authority activities and rates uh, that we have been informed that the rates and activities are governed by the internal board, which are present here today. And for the most part, um, no one in the community is even aware of this. Uh, the Yes, I, Pam Marchand is correct that this rate meeting was posted on the website, but there is no outreach or push notice to the community, whether it be a, an article in the Warren Times or the Bristol Times saying, on such and such date, we are having this meeting, here's the invitation, and attend if you may. There's no push notification on that. It's largely viewed from the community as a very dark hole that nobody knows what's going on. Frankly, we do not have to have a public hearing in order to change the rates. Some years ago, the board decided that we would never change a rate without having a public hearing. I happened to live in Barrington and it was in my local paper that, that it was advertised, it was an article, it was the, the information that there was going to be a public hearing this evening. That did not happen in Warren or Bristol? No, there, there has been articles, but the links to provide into this was not provided in the papers. And furthermore, you, your, your statement that uh, you're absolutely right. The Bristol County Ward Authority doesn't, by law, require any public engagement for the raising of rates is the actual problem. And not saying that you guys are the problem, it's the law. Okay, I appreciate your opinion. Uh, any uh, one have any questions for Mr. Botello? We'll certainly take your comments under advisement. Once this public hearing is over, we will be scheduling a regular meeting at which the water rate increase will then be discussed and acted upon. Thank you very much for your input, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else who is viewing this who wishes to make some comment or ask a question? or any member of the board who wishes to elaborate on anything that has been presented to us. I would only ask how much of the budget, uh, Pam, did you say was uh, involved with the dam removal? Uh, it's pretty minimal amount for this year, actually, because we're just in permitting phases. 
once that starts. Alan, how do uh, members of the public, I see a lot of names on the screen that I don't recognize. How do they let us know they want to speak if they don't they know how raise, to use the chat function? They can raise their hand on the screen or, or Pam, if they, they make some movement, they can show us who they are. And they can raise their hand or I think they can put a, put a hand up on their screen so we can see. Everybody... <laughs> If they can't do that at this point, if they're just on a phone line, uh, certainly unmute and uh, let us know that you'd like to uh, uh, speak. And can, can you give us a little brief synopsis of what the cost of saving uh, the reservoir as a water source would be? I mean, I sat there in the council and I raised questions as well. I think it's good for the public to know that the pipeline costs X millions of dollars and the reservoir maintaining it costs X amount of dollars. And that way we can have that comparison. Uh, well, it's not so much maintaining the reservoir as it is maintaining the dams. Right. The uh, upper, the, the DEM is changing their requirements for uh, dams and how they should be constructed. And if uh, that may end up applying to these dams, they would need to be rebuilt because they were, one was built in the 60s, but the upper dam was not built as a dam. It was built as an earthen dike. So it really does not have, um, it only has a uh, concrete structure for water flow and a low level outlet. It does not have sluice gates and it does not have a spillway. Um, the problem with restriction is actually under the state road on Schoolhouse Road. Do, do um, we have actual numbers that you can compare back and forth? For what it may cost, yes. Uh, Power Engineering did put some numbers together. The cost of removing the dams is about 2 million. We've been we've been obtained a 1.4 million dollar grant to this state, and we're looking to appro uh, apply for a federal grant for the balance. And the cost to to keep them up and to do treatment and versus the pipeline. Uh, it could cost us 500 thousand to a million dollars, depending on especially for the upper dams to what would be required by the DEM, we're not sure at this point exactly what their final regulation is going to be. But the, excuse me, Pam, but the costs you just gave don't include treatment of the water in the reservoirs, does it? No, no. So if, if we maintain the reservoirs as a water supply and we maintain the reservoirs as a water supply in lieu of the Pawtucket- That's what I'm getting to, yeah we would have to spend 50 or 60, $70 million to build a new treatment plant and then um, do all the maintenance work on the dams and so forth. Right, then you have the upper supplies that you would also have to spend. We'd have to replace pump stations and pipelines as well. So you're looking at a $100 million project for um, probably about two to 3 million gallons of water a day, which would not be adequate for our system. Right. I would add, the other part of, excuse me, Alan, I'm sorry. The other Go part ahead. of the issue associated with keeping the, um, the existing reservoirs is that the water supply in quantity and quality is not assured by anybody. There's a lot of development in Massachusetts, which has caused problems of water quality. And it also at the same time is removing water quantity. So the quantity coming downstream would be much less than we would be able to get from Pawtucket. That's correct. And, and despite and the fact right. that we've spent over a million dollars in purchasing uh, land around our reservoirs, uh, that's not stopped the development that's been allowed in Massachusetts, even though we have uh, submitted information requesting that uh, that, that not be done. And it's and, been and, my and, understanding also over the years that uh, the Massachusetts reservoirs, we'd be at the whim of the state of Massachusetts. At any given time, they can say, we don't want any water going to Rhode Island if they say they need it. I would add that some years ago when we were trying to rebuild 
the pipeline from, from the Kikamua, from, excuse me, from the Anawan Reservoir, we discovered that the town of Rehoboth would not allow us to make sample borings. There are many bridges because there's a lot of wetlands in that town. And we plan to put the pipe along the side of the road, not, not in the middle of the road. But every time we came to one of these little culverts, we wanted to be able to take a sampling to figure out what's there, why was there a culvert, how deep did we have to go to get past it? What, in other words, how are we gonna bridge the, bridge the, the, the culvert with our pipe? And, Re, and Rehoboth Council, the, the Board of Selectmen refused our opportunity to even drill sample holes in the ground to test. And this went on for several years. We could not even estimate the final cost and do the final design of the pipeline to come down here. Mr. Chair. So I agree with you on the comments about uh, high manganese content, turbidity. It's very difficult to treat. It's inadequate supply. This, this is why we shut down the plant, uh, which dates back to 1906. Mr. Chairman, can I ask one more question? I don't, we, sure. can discuss, we can discuss most all of this in the regular meeting anyway. We can. But, but Pam, can you just, if, if we stayed at the 5% increase, can you give us an indication of how much that would be on an average bill increase? Uh, yes. Let's see. Get... 5% would be $28.38 a year or $2.37 a month. That's a cup of coffee. Not Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I do want to say that I think Mr. Bartello had a lot of good comments and some of which, um, uh, all, all of which we, we need to take under consideration. And I think his, his thinking in terms of trying to minimize expenses is a perfectly reasonable one. Thank you very much, Juan. I, I appreciate uh, your advocacy. And I, I will state that uh, in your positions, it's very, very easy to become and have tunnel vision and focusing just on the water logistical, um, you know, supply and transmission issue as an entity. But please understand when you talk about dam removal specifically, there is, there is much more than uh, rates and logistics. It actually is altering our private property um, and, and, and I'll be selfish in claiming this as an example, 30% of my front property would be inundated uh, from, I have a, a small farm, uh, which relies on hay cultivation. 30% of that front property would be salt water inundated. That means at that point, my land usage in terms of Rhode Island DEM farm status uh, is at risk and I would potentially lose farm status which and then impacts me from a, a domino perspective of losing um, municipal tax credits, it impacts my hay yield, um, the, the price that I would get for hay yield, and there are potential flooding issues that we experience today. There's, so I, I would highly recommend that um, to please take a look at our community risk assessment that identifies eight of these risk factors, which has been shared with Pam in the, in the uh, town of Warren. Thank you. Okay. And just to follow up on that, yes, PAR is uh, doing further investigations uh, in, on the property, especially on the west side of the Kikamuit. And we are hoping to have uh, more details on that for a meeting next month, which we are hoping to hold with the town of Warren. I see someone named Loretta. You're watching us. Do you have some input or a question? So. I just finally figured it all out. Thank you. Um, my name is Loretta Francis. I live at 38 Coach Mergo Lane in Barrington, and I'm opposed to this rate increase. Um, a 5% race. A rate increase, with all due respect, Mr. Gennetto, might be a cup of coffee, but um, relative to last year's 10% increase for the consumer, we really, um, everyone's taking a hit here. 
um, we could look at these projects and I'm not going to get into any um, debate with you engineers and um, all of the directors. I think you guys are doing a great job trying to get the, the, the issues that we have here um, under control. But to ask the consumer for a 5% increase when we've just given you, well, actually you've given us a 10% increase last year, that's a lot of money to um, regular working people. Um, before I lived in Barrington, I was a lifelong Bristolian. My dad owned a huge home in Bristol and um, we paid our fair share of water bills, just like you, all you folks have. But anytime there was a dispute, I was always given the um, Loretta, it's a leaky, whatever it is. And, and most of the time the consumer really has no, um, what's the word I'm looking for, remedy, if there's a dispute with the bill. Um, so that's what I think. I think, I just wanna go on the record saying I'm opposed to the rate increase. Thank you I for your time. I understand. Anyone else have a question or a comment? I see uh, there's a note here from Kendall Reese to everyone. Where are the dates, agendas? Pam, where can, where can uh, Mr. Reese go to? It would be uh, on our website. Okay. Give him the website uh, name, please, so he can go there and take a look quickly. We, all, we announce, it's my policy to announce each item, um, uh, Mr. Reese, announce each item in the agenda as we proceed. Okay. And you're certainly welcome to come to the regular meeting. Is there any further discussion or questions by anyone regarding the public Excuse hearing? Excuse me, Alan. I just want to mention yeah. to I just want to mention to Loretta that one thing that will help um, her and all customers is the fact that we have put in a new metering system, and that metering system is very sophisticated, and will actually be able to de detect when a home is having leaks in the home and so that these will be discovered much quicker than ever in the past. And so any additional charges should be minimal that, that are due to a leak. That was, that was where I lived in Bristol. Here in Barrington, I'm in a brand new development and I haven't had any of those kinds of problems since I've moved to where I'm living now, but thank you. And then I had just one, have one last question and I don't know this and it is truly a question. Where does, where do we sit from um, the East Bay in compares to the rest of the state in comparison to a comp analysis on, pro, uh, on pricing? As far yeah, as, our rates, go ahead, Pam, please. I say our rates do tend to be on the higher side. Uh, we're not the highest and uh, we probably compare to Newport area. Our main issue is we had to buy our water supply from a private company and we had to pay for the construction of the East Bay pipeline, both of which ended up being about $50 million. So we're just managing to pay those off and we're using that debt service towards all of our future projects. So we don't have to have major increases like uh, Providence is doing. All right, so it's fair to summarize that we're, we're one of the highest in the state at this time, and we're projected to jump up 50% in the next 10 years again. We're uh, towards, we're not the highest, but we're uh, above the average. And uh, all of the other systems are doing the same thing we are because we're all old and we really need to address our infrastructure. Unfortunately, we have to address also our source of supply which is going to be our major expense for the next uh, periods of time. Thank you. Well, one thing I'd like to, like to add um, is that when you do a comparison between different rates around the state, it becomes difficult to do that um, in a fair and equitable manner because there are a number of water suppliers who are municipal agencies and some of their costs are actually buried within the town budget and are not reflected in the rates that they charge. 
for instance, I, I'm not going to name the town right now, but I was looking at this over the last few weeks, and there is at least one town who actually charges on the basis of value of homes in part, um, part of their rate structure, which is really a, a very unusual situation. The rate structures are much uh, different throughout the, uh, the state of Rhode Island. In a way, I think that Pam explained how our rate structure operates. We have existing costs that we must do, whether you use a drop of water or not. Uh, and so there's a base charge that keeps us all here, keeps us working, keeps everything moving. And then there's the actual cost of the water itself. So that's why there are two parts. And then there's also two and a half cents, a hundred gallons, that's a state tax that gets put on top of everything. And that I think is still shown in the bill, a separate item. Anyway, I, it's uh, 641. If there are no other questions, I'd like to bring the, uh, conclude the rate hearing, and then we will change because it's a different, a, a different meeting notice. We will, we'll back out of this and we'll go and open up our regular meeting, which was scheduled to start at 6.30. Alan, I believe you had another chat message there. Oh, I'm sorry. Sure. Where is it? I, I, I don't see it. Uh, it came up and disappeared. If the BCWA was able to buy water from a private company, is there any possibility for the Bristol County water users to purchase water from another water supplier? How is BCWA not a monopoly? Every... And, I can answer that question. And then the second every, question... Every utility is a monopoly. Go ahead. And the second question, and the, the both are from Kendall Reese. Uh, where are the dates, agendas, and Zoom login information posted? Okay, let's let's go back and get that squared away. Please give Mr. Reese. The, it will be the on the our website, website, so he can see that and log in. Right, it's bcwari.com. If you go down to the, it's usually posted whatever meetings are upcoming, but you can also go to the bottom of the page. There's a calendar and click on the uh, calendar date. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll continue our discussions because we're gonna be talking about this when it appears in that part of the agenda anyway. So we'll answer all these questions that continue. Uh, basically, except for cable uh, services, which uh, or or tell you know that kind of thing in various towns, there's usually a few options. There didn't used to be in the area, but there's a couple of options now uh, with I3 broadband and Cox and Verizon is somewhere in the area. Um, but most utilities have a franchise. Uh, we have a frame. I mean, I, I think you can only buy electricity from from National Grid and only you can buy gas, natural gas, from National Grid. Uh, starting when we first became aware of the original uh, Bristol County Water Company, they had a franchise for 20 years, at least when I was on the town council in Barrington, a franchise that was ending after 20 years to be renewed. They're the ones with whom if somebody, they, they put the pipes in the street, they're the ones that if you wanted to connect to a public water supply, you had to buy it from them. Uh, and I think that's the same way with gas, the same way with electricity right now. Unless you have solar or you have, a, I don't know, a chipmunk in a cage to generate your own electricity or wind, that you're going to have to buy from the existing utilities. And we are that utility for water in this area. Well, let's, uh, and I, and I, think, I think that's, that's the... Um, I think the concern that a lot of the co community now is being raised aware of that with these rate increases, um, that all the public utility companies that Mr. Klepper has identified in his statement, that all the utility companies in Rhode Island is regulated by the Public Utilities Commission and the unique structure and operating um, umbrella that Bristol County Water Authority is very unique and independent outside of that standard. And I think that's where much of the uh, community has its concern. That was done actually to the advantage of the Bristol County, but we'll talk about that later, sir. I'll be happy to discuss that with you. Uh, are there any other comments or questions? If Mr. Reese is able to 
connect to our meeting. I'll take a motion to adjourn the public hearing. So moved. From Juan and seconded by Tom. Raise your hand so I can see the members here to adjourn. It is unanimous. Okay, we'll see you all very shortly as soon as we reconnect with the regular meeting.